All right, Susan Slusser does a great job for us covering the athletics. We haven't heard from them yet here so far as this show is concerned this early part of spring. And she says, hello, Susan, always a pleasure. Good to have you aboard. When Mike Fires showed up, was he mobbed at his locker? He was mobbed. Um, he was actually mobbed during Fan Fest. And at, during Fan Fest, he said, I'm not going to talk about this. I don't want to be a distraction to my team. Uh, he's since then talked a little bit here and there snippets more in reaction to things that Astros and other people are saying about him when uh, Carlos Correa the other day suggested that fire should come out and specify that Jose Altuve had not been cheating that year. Fire said he didn't want to comment, but then he said to me as I was sort of walking away, he said, you know what, we did it all as a team. Uh, and since then, you know, I asked Rob Manfred the other day about fire safety, particularly at Houston. He has received uh, a lot of threats from, from people since he uh, was the first person whose comments started launched the investigation. Uh, and he said uh, he's used to death threats. He's had death threats before, so that doesn't concern him too much. He does worry about his family's safety, uh, but I think he's he really does just want to focus on baseball and move on. I know that's tough. But uh, since he's the center of this storm, but he's he's trying to do his best to do so. He's going to get questions all year, though. No, no, no doubt about it. And I have no problem with what he did. I guess if I had one question, I'd like to ask him, why did it take you two years to say something? Yeah, um, he you know, I think everybody with that 2017 team and what other other teams uh, were doing it. We're in a tough situation. I talked to Mike about that today. He said it was a weird spot for all of us. You know, the pitching staff wasn't the one that was stealing signs. However, they were all benefiting from it. You know, the team's success, more run support, all of that. Nobody stepped up. Fires was the first one. It took them longer. But he was saying stuff behind the scenes as soon as he went to the Tigers, as soon as he went to the A's. You know, he was letting him know, hey, look, look out for this. This is what's happening. Uh, and then once nothing got done after some official complaints, I think he felt like he had to say something publicly. All right, so there's his answer there. Now, I'll tell you one thing that the AO West teams better be aware of. The Houston Astros are going to be on a rampage in 2020. They are going to play with a gigantic boulder on their shoulders. Every game is going to be all revved up, and they're going to play great. Now, they may get knocked off in a postseason because I don't love their pitching, but as far as the regular season is concerned, they will be a – they're going to be very, very good. And I got to see the Angels, who can't pitch. I have to see Texas, who maybe can't hit. And I got to see the A's for once in their lives not start the year 32 and 35 and dig <laughs> themselves a big hole. What's your take on that for a sec? Let me hear. Well, you know, that is one of the A's uh, – the things they're stressing this season is they'd like to get off to a better start. They never have, though. I mean, you remember that great 2001 A's team, Giambi, the big three, Johnny Damon. That, that, that team got off to such a bad start. I remember Damon standing in the middle of the clubhouse saying, we're all going to get traded, and they went on and won 100 games. So uh, that's just a thing in Oakland. They're kind of used to doing it that way. They feel very good about their team, their rotation – is superb. It's funny. You look at it on paper. They lose three veterans in Bailey, Roark, and Brett Anderson, and their rotation is probably better. They get Manaya back for a full season. This is assuming on full health. Frankie Montas for a full season after the 80-game suspension. Of course, we talked about fires. And then A.J. Puck and Jesus Lazardo, who are two of the top prospects in the game and nasty left-handers, particularly Lazardo. Uh, both of them could be in the Rookie of the Year race. So, uh, I think the A's feel very good about their pitching. And then the rest of the team, for an A's team, very little turnover. The core group, of course, is all back. Marcus Simeon is coming off a third-place finish in the MVP race. Of course, you got the mats on the corners. Uh, I think the A's are feeling extremely good about this season. And they're not going to have – they're going to have to answer some questions since – Fires was at the center of all this Astros stuff, but certainly nothing like what the Astros are going to have to deal oh, 100%. with. 100 percent. No, no, the A's are going to be uh, – I think they should be a good job with, the, with their rundown. They should be a good team, but I'm telling you right now, it's going to take 100 wins. Uh, they're yeah, not gonna make, right. they're, not, they're not winning the division, and, and the A's got to get out of that wild card game because they never win a big game. So the A's got to get out of the Kansas Cities, the Yankees, Tampa. Stay out of that game. And I don't know if they can win the division because I think Houston's going to be very difficult to beat. That's my take on it. Does the do the A players know that they got an angry bear they got to deal with now in Houston, and they the Astros are actually going to be more motivated than normal after all this after all this stuff with them? 
Yeah, you know, the A's players have never discounted Houston, even in the midst of all of this. Uh, they they know what kind of talent they have. They're certainly very happy that they don't have to face Cole every time they see Houston, uh, who, you know, dominated the A's just as much as he dominated everybody else. I think they feel like, uh, you know, certainly that's at least one thing that might be a little bit in their favor, but they know that the lineup is tremendous. And of course, the rotation is still excellent in, in Houston. So, uh, yeah, the road through to the AL West still goes through the Astros, but the A's feel confident. I think they are focused on the division title and they know it'll take probably a hundred wins. They're ready for it. I, I think that they're, uh, you know, they've learned a lot, particularly from that last wild card game. Sean Mania told me the other day, uh, he feels like he now knows kind of like what it's like to be, uh, you know, to, to fail on the big stage. He can take it and use that. It's both motivation and, and a real learning tool. And a good step in the right direction as far as the new ballpark is concerned. It sounds like down by the port, this very well could happen. What's the latest there? Yeah, you know, I've been a little skeptical about it. There are a lot of roadblocks, and I think there's still probably some roadblocks with the port location, but the A's expect that they're going to get approval at the port location sometime this summer. The environmental impact report is due probably basically any day now. I, I think the city council has it. And from there, they just start going through public hearings. And once they're through that, I think they feel like they could get public approval. They've still got that Coliseum site that they could fall back on. They don't like to talk about that as a potential plan B. But there, you know, there are options and they feel like there is a lot of room for optimism right now. Dave Cavill is always optimistic and enthusiastic, but this is probably peak enthusiasm for him. He's, he, I think he said the other day something about getting the shovels ready, which... Wow. You know, I'll That's, leave it when I see it. Now, I will too, but that I love to see for that city. They deserve to keep the team. Good job, Susan. Thanks very much. Appreciate it today. Thanks, Chris.